programs. A lot of, shall we say, intermingling between different personalities. We will document that as we go on. It's going to be a fun night as we get it going from Kansas City. Kip Kissinger, our lead official, puts the ball in the air, and it's the Fighting Illini that have the game's first possession. Last night was a great start for Illinois, and then it went south in a hurry, Mark. It did go south in a hurry, but you know, it, it all comes down to a consolation game. Who wants to play? Who wants to be physical? Who wants to be dominant? And right there, Kofi Coburn, a little high-low from Hawkins to Coburn. That is deadly inside. Miguel picks up the foul. Here's Brad Underwood, who, of course, played at Kansas State. He was an assistant at K-State under Frank Martin. McPherson, Kansas native. Going against uh, his alma mater tonight. That is one part of the coaching equation we have tonight. Yeah, a little more emotion and nostalgia for each coach tonight on each bench. And for Bruce Weber, of course, he came to Kansas State from Illinois. Spent nine seasons there, 2003 to 2012. In year one with the Illini, went to the Sweet 16. In year two, lost to the national championship game by five points to North Carolina in St. Louis. Yeah, that historic team with D. Brown, Luther Head, Darren Williams. 75-70 the final, as you mentioned, Mark, in that national title game. And now Bruce Weber sits on the opposite bench of K-State and talked about how it would be more of an emotional game for him. That's a jumper by Miguel, a rounded out and a Coburn rebound. Curbelo. Had some good moments and some not so good moments in the first game last night. Williams is in the starting lineup tonight. A three from the left corner. Off the mark, but an offensive rebound by Coburn. Trying to back down Easy Egg, who goes to the right hand. Scores and one. We talked last night in the second half that Kobe Coburn, while he was being surrounded by Cincinnati defenders, had to become a passer out of the post. And here he gets the offensive rebound. Why? Because he was a good passer out of the post initially, and then goes up strong again. I like the fact that he's staying low, he's staying balanced. Now, but does he have enough legs? After the three-game suspension, he gassed out the second half last night. Preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. It was the monster year a season ago. He was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Started all 31 games for Illinois, which they were number one seed in the NCAA tournament last season. Well, I love the fact that Illinois is getting back to where they belong with just pounding the ball inside to Kofi Coburn. Coburn, by the way, has now hit his first seven free throws of the season. He's shooting 55% from the line last year. There's a nice drive, and with the left hand, the finish by Nigel Pack. Yeah, the leadership of number 24, Nigel Pack, who had a historic freshman season last year at K-State. Coming out aggressive here this evening. That's what they need to get that sunshine back on the right side of the ledger. A little dark last night, you know what I'm saying, after that loss? Curbelo to Hawkins. I know exactly what you're saying. Coburn tries to bat it away, but it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Illini. Well, when Cincinnati last night started the game just man-to-man -man against Coburn, they lit it up, and Curbelo from the outside, 20 of their combined 23 points in about the first 12 minutes of the game, but Mark, it changed drastically after that point. Now you take a look at Kofi Coburn. He just looked like he was gassed, and credit Cincinnati Wes Miller for going to a swarming defense, but just dominating Cincinnati over the Illini, 63-28 during that stretch. Easy Agu just picked up his second foul, and that's going to quickly get Davion Bradford off the Kansas State bench. Diego had six points, five rebounds in 15 minutes last night. Quickly on the bench after two fouls inside the first couple of minutes tonight. I actually think Davion Bradford might be a little better matchup with Kofi Cobra. We'll see. The issue with Bradford, obviously, is still trying to come back from pneumonia. Definitely not physically at full strength, but playing what he can do. And he's a big body, certainly in the middle. You know, Mark, you talked about the, the coaches and their relationships with the two universities. Of course, Mark Smith, number 13 in white for K-State, played at Illinois, was had an interesting greeting from the Illini fans when he was introduced as the K-State Wildcat. There's Smith there. 
He dumps it underneath. He gets an assist as Bradford lays it in. Now, I think Davion Bradford is a really big key to the success of this K-State team. Quick ball movement. Hawkins kicks it. Here's Frazier, who had a tough night last night, did not score. Just the second time in his Illini five-year career, he had a game without any points. Yeah, he was pedestrian last night, would be the best way to describe it. Fravello was not for that pedestrian early, nor is he tonight. If he can start hitting that three-point shot, he will be a big weapon. That was just a second three-point make of the season in 12 tries that last time down the floor. No, I like Illinois' spacing early and ball movement mm. early in this game. They've obviously worked on just sharing the basketball, spreading the floor. You know, the thing about it, you're always going to have Coburn inside. And a poor job of rotation by K-State. And Illinois takes full advantage. K-State already has Easy Agu on the bench with two fouls. And Selton Miguel, who was a rebound shy of a double-double last night against Arkansas, just picked up his second foul. So already some key early foul trouble for the Wildcats. And we're just over three minutes into the game. I hate that when we use a guy in the open and sell him, and then he gets some foul trouble. You know, it just drives me crazy. Coburn. You know, we, we talked about Kofi's night last night. Hot start. Not a great finish, but he still finished with 18 yeah, points. Yeah. But he was so good early and so efficient early. Then he was two for six with six points the rest of the way for three quarters of the game. I, mean, I would rest him some. You know, I'd give him an end of end of uh, TV timeouts and things like that. Give him a blow as Masood knocks it down. Which is key for Masood because he was scoreless last night for K-State. He missed all eight of his field goal attempts. Five of those were three-point shots. And that was in 31 minutes of time. Masood is a big guy that can look over defenders and knock down shots. Critical for K-State. Corbello weaving through traffic. That looked like it was an intended lob for Coburn, but didn't leave his feet. So here comes McGurl, who had a nice night last night for K-State off the bench. He's going to launch the three. You, know, you can't let that affect you if you're McGurl. You've got to keep shooting the basketball. He's a guy that wants to bring some energy and leadership off the bench tonight. Talked to him before the game. He did have a good game last game. He struggled the first two games of the season, but he wants to defend hard and well. A bit matched up with Frazier right there. Corbello skips it near side. Three Hawkins on the way. Good. And the big man has a lot of different elements to his game, and that outside shooting is one of it. Yeah, Coleman Hawkins is a different maker. Difference maker. Such a good athlete. He's long at 6'10. There you saw the three ball action from him. He blocked a few shots, too. It's all over Masood, and Coleman Hawkins will pick up the foul, his first, but it's an early six-point lead here for the Illini, almost five minutes in. Well, wow. Early to late in life, and most breeders keep their Herefords for their entire life until the day that they die of natural causes. Brad very proud as his little Hereford came in third place in that. Ierco is the name, which is after a coffee shop. I think the only coffee shop, by the way, in Macomb, Illinois. <laughs> Wow, a lot of data, and I must confess that's the first time that I've ever talked or heard somebody talk about fertility rate while on the air. Perfects are really docile. They're almost pet-like. They're about 1,000 pounds. Uh, they started in the mid-18th century with Benjamin Tompkins, so it's really a popular breed, and Brad has done very well. Congratulations to Brad Underwood Absolutely. for third place at the State Fair in Springfield. Right now, his team with a six-point lead. I am proud to have known Brad all of these years from the time he was in Macomb and had no idea he had such talent in breeding Herefords. Marquise Noel off the bench for K-State, and he knocks down a long two-point shot. You never know what you're going to get on an ESPN broadcast. That is for sure. Especially when you have the dueling marks. <laughs> There's a drive by Payne. Runs into Noel. Tell you what, for Noel, that takes some guts. You know, that was 5'8". Payne is a big man, 6'10", 240 pounds. And this is the 21st Annual Hall of Fame Classic. Every year with the Hall of Fame Classic, there is the 
induction ceremony the day prior to this tournament starting. It was fun to see the 2021 class inducted. They're the inductees for this year. Ben Bias' mother, uh, Dr. Denise Bias, by the way, was here along with the Bias family to help induct the late Lynn Bias. And great to see all the other gentlemen here. Yeah, Rick Bird was, it was really special for me. I covered Rick during the times I was covering the OVC for for ESPN. Rick, of course, a legendary coach at the NAI level and then the transition of Belmont to the Division I level and what tremendous success Belmont had in the A-Sun and then ultimately the OVC and the number of NCAA tournaments. But the thing I, I love about Rick the most is that he led all of Division I coaches over a 15-year period with academic All-Americans in Belmont. Really, the championship level on the classroom and on the court was just stellar under Rick Bird, one of the truly great coaches in the history of the game. Now, this is the third place game. What are your keys to winning a consolation game? So, unfortunately, I have a lot of experience in this area. And so, number one is the sun's going to come up. And the sun came up this morning for Bruce Weber and for Brad Underwood. And then you've got to divide your team into two areas, the energy givers and the energy suckers. The energy givers are going to be here to play tonight regardless. And the players read your body language, Mark. That's critical as a head coach, that you carry yourself after that sun comes up with an opportunity for this next game. Typically, the teams that win consolation games are the ones that who really want to be here versus ones who are just here and putting in their time. I actually, I actually specialized in consolation games and won quite a few, as a matter of fact. Well, Illinois comes in ranked 14th. They want to snap the two-game losing skid. K-State would like to add a win against the top 25 team. There's a shot off the mark from Williams. This is going to be K-State ball. Payne. Bradford there taking the charge. Good. Speaking of Herefords, they what Davy and Bradford just laid his backside right into pain and delivered some pain. What a block off by that big dude. He just built a wall around the basket. Watch 21. Davy and Bradford, as he's right in the middle of the paint. Look at this. I mean, he just stays with it and rides them right out. That is well done. And there's the foul right there with the hook over the shoulder. I like the big kid. Mark Smith who has played against his old team, Illinois, before because he spent three years at Mizzou, and they would have the annual Bragging Rights game in St. Louis against the Fighting Illini. First time to play against Illinois, though, as a member of K-State. Has to be a little extra juice, yeah. especially when the Illini fans are reacting to him the way they have. Yep. Who is every touch, yeah. 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 Hey, it's part of the gig. We live in a transfer world. You're going to hear from it if you transfer. McGurl for the lead. Off the front rim and a rebound for Kofi. It's going to be interesting to see how Illinois handles this now. They got to a good start again tonight, but they crumbled against Cincinnati at about this time last. Look at Kofi get on the floor. And then a grab by Frazier who fouls Smith. I think he had a little more defensive help. Trailing down the floor than he anticipated, but committed the foul to stop the clock. So we're under 12 minutes to play first half from Kansas City. It's a one-point lead for the Fighting Alina. It's what stuck with me. I mean, you, you've never seen a more proud father talking about, my daughter's a tennis player at Notre Dame. She's really good. You watch her. You know, she's a PT peer. I don't think it was like the best elevator ride ever with Dick not talking about basketball, but talking about his daughter and his priorities in place. Good parenting. It bounces out of bounds. And they say it is an Illinois ball. You know, Mark, we, we've also... I think the word would be joyful. We're joyful to be here in this arena. Yes. Broadcast. We talked about this. I mean, we, we love we love working together, and we love being a part of college basketball. And we're healthy, right? Yeah. We assume we're going to be there tomorrow to do another one and another one and another one. You know, when you hear the word cancer, that changes the dynamics of everything. And can you imagine how joyful Dick is to return to the, what he loves to do the most? It's been great. So can't wait to... Here, Dick will be later tonight over on ESPN for Gonzaga and UCLA. 
Can we watch while we're doing this? Can we do like double duty? Is that possible? We'll work on that. Championship game. We got a good game ourselves. We got a great game. Arkansas Cincinnati later tonight on ESPN2. We'll have that at uh, 9:30 Eastern. Who's Mick Cronin now, the UCLA coach, who's yeah. led the Bruins to the number two spot in the country. Have a chance to go to number one, obviously. Former head coach at University of Cincinnati, and now Wes Miller doing Mick Cronin, Bob Huggins-like work on the sidelines for the Bearcats, and you'll see them against the Arkansas Razorbacks tonight on ESPN2. And the freshman Landers defending Coburn. Landers picked up the foul. That's a 17 foul, so with... Over 11 minutes to play in the first half. A one and one here for Kofi Coburn. Here's his first free throw miss of the season after hitting his first seven, including three tonight. His release looks good. Kansas State has six field goals made from six different players. Mark Smith came up a bit short. The K-State fans wanted a, some call there as Coburn kind of got tangled up at the net a little bit. And there's a pass back behind Curbelo, and Illinois turns it over. That's their fourth. And Noel right there is looking at Mark Smith saying, what are you doing? You know, because Mark Smith was really forcing that shot on Brad Underwood's defense. That almost looked like I used to play at Illinois, and I want to make a shot here. Now Noel goes and takes one from way downtown. Five points for Noel. Randerson feeds Coburn. Landers on him again defensively. Masu trying to help out. There's an offensive foul called on Coburn. So I'm staying at the Hampton. In its suites about three blocks away, and I think Noel is staying in the same hotel. That's where he shot that one from. Yep. Man, that is deep. Don't show up at the hotel. There is security there. First lead for Kansas State, thanks to that three last time down the floor. For Noel, is going to shoot another. That's off uh, the back. Right? Not sure about that. Illinois shot 3 of 22 from beyond the arc last night. So did K-State. Coburn down low. Has nine points now. What a great athletic play on a, a ball that skipped across the pond. He's got to somehow catch it. Mishandles it a little bit, but retrieves it. and That makes the play. It never gets in a hurry. But Kofi Coburn, that is an athletic, tough play to make. Pack. Going to shoot a long two, contested. Rebound on the floor. Frazier gets to it first. They're going to call a tie up. Mark Smith got around to get a hand on it. And Kip Kissinger there on the baseline says it is a hell ball possession arrow K State. Watch Kofi Coburn here. Now, this, this pass is hard to handle because it's a skip rock. It's spinning. It comes down low. A hand gets on it. But look, those big old paws pick the ball up. And then, never in a hurry, gathers, balanced, finish. Kofi Coburn really showing some stuff tonight. Just over midway through this first half. Third place game from Kansas City, the Hall of Fame Classic. Noel sees the C's part and drives and lays it in with the left hand. Seven points off the bench for Noel. So, Kofi, I gave you kudos the last possession, but on defense there, why did you challenge that shot? You stood there and watched. Another turnover for Illinois. There's six. Noel just kind of flipped it back. Pack ran into the knee of Coleman Hawkins and was a little banked up, but is able to get the timeout. So K-State to keep possession uses their first timeout. 9-15 to play first half, and it's the Wildcats by two. She who has rubbed the bottom will now be granted three wishes. He really lost his game legs as the game went along last night. And so you've got to watch his minutes. You've got to make sure he gets a little bit of rest here and there. Save him for the second half. He played 27 minutes in his debut last night.
Massoud. Batted around by Coburn to himself, an outlet for Corbello. Corbello trying to get downhill, kicks it. Plumber. Well, Brad Underwood, when we asked about Alfonso Plumber, he just said, elite shooter and scorer. Yeah, microwave was how he described it. The shot is given the Illini back to lead. Landers, the freshman, lets one fly. It's short off the left rim. Smith right on the hip there at Corbello. Well, Corbello really surveying right now. Behind the back. And there's Plummer again. Corbello knew exactly what he was doing. He was setting up Plummer that entire time. He put the ball on the floor not to score. He put the ball on the floor to draw white jerseys and to find Plummer. That is smart point guard play by Andre Corbello. Back-to-back -back threes for the grad transfer from Utah, Alfonso Plummer. And now Noel continuing his outstanding scoring off the bench tonight with nine. When you're seven feet, you can't play with your hands down. You've got to have active hands. Plummer. Why not? He's Why not? Why not? Hey, Boom! Three in a row! Alfonso Plummer, three straight trips down the floor for the Illini. He has knocked down three threes. the glass. Colburn a little late getting there. Did it just the shot. But Noel right now can barely miss. Is anyone guarding Marquise Noel? It's a rhetorical question. He has scored the last nine points for Kansas State. Noel has. It's a back within three. Corbello a lot behind the back to Colburn to lay it in. Do you get style points for that? You do tonight. Andre Corbello is fun to watch. I guess it would more accurately be described as behind the head. Pass. <laughs> yeah, what's behind the back? But it was certainly fun to watch. Noel trying to get past Colbert again. Noel gets past Coleman. It was the shot clock expiring. Missed a shot there. It's just a second miss. Well, let's just watch Andre Carbello again. See if we get by Noel. Well, almost got the strip. Kept by Carbello. Here's Plummer. He's going to take. That's off. That's well long. Coburn, though, trying to get points for Illinois. It does on the putback. 13 for Coburn. Timeout. K State. K-State, they needed a lift. And off Villanova, that's a huge win for the Badgers and for the Big Ten. Well, getting a breather, he's had quite a first half off the bench for Kansas State with 11 points, 5 of 7 shooting. Pack, and it knocked away for a moment. Pack on the drive, it rolls off. Bradford the rebound and over the back. It looked like Austin Hutcherson commits the foul. He does his first. It's Hutcherson who made his season debut last night. He'd been dealing with a tailbone injury. Last night made his season debut with six points against Cincinnati. Hit a couple of threes in 19 minutes. Yeah, if you have a tailbone injury, I don't know that you want to run into Davian Bradford very nope. often. Smith gets around into the lane and floats it up and scores. A really good read by Mark Smith. Was not sped up. Coming off the, the ball screen. Read it perfectly. Got the defender on his hip. Just let it fly. Illinois hit 
four of their first nine shots, which isn't bad, but they've hit six of their last seven. Hawkins just lost it right into the bread basket of Masood. That is the seventh Illinois turnover. K-State, by the way, has not turned the ball over yet tonight. And a high one off the glass, kissed in by Nigel Pack to pull them within three. You know, the guy that's been absent again, number one in orange. Frazier has not scored in this game. He struggled last night. It's a good thing Plummer's come up big as... Hutcherson drives and lays it in. He looks healthy. He looked explosive on that play. Over the top short pass for Bradford, but Payne was there to cause some confusion to block that away. So there's the first K-State turnover of the game, and it comes with just about four minutes left in the half. Hawkins, quick stop, nearly skidded into a travel, but did not. Really good defense by Ishma Sood. Hutcherson's three, long. With Bradford in the game, he looks a little gassed right now, doesn't he? He, does. he labored to get down the floor right there. A foul on Hawkins before the drive by Massoud. Timeout with 3.16 to play in the first half of this third place game. Hey, you get to Kansas City, you want a great burger, go to the classic place in town. Town topic. You might see Andy Reid there enjoying a nice burger. Those points. They were dynamic. And the Russian reinforcement of Vic Lockett, he was a guy that came up big as well off the bench for West Miller's ball club. So depth against that very athletic front of Arkansas, good guard play, two solid teams vying for national recognition. Looking forward to that. And my partner Mark Adams may or may not speak Russian during that telecast. Oh, I'll speak Russian. Both free throws for Masood. He has five in this first half. Three-point lead for the Illini. Illinois has 11 made baskets, nine assists, five of those from Curbelo. Curbelo, Coburn, double. Three seconds in the lane. Well, the college football playoff, new standings out. And how about this, Bearcat fans? They're going to be ecstatic. They are now number four. We got uh, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, and then number four, Cincinnati. If they're not in the playoffs, then I give up. But I got to tell you, I don't trust the money-driven machine that is college football when it comes to deciding who's in the playoffs and who isn't. Maybe it's just me. There are some others who probably share that sentiment. If they win out, it's going to be hard, I would think, now to keep them out. But we'll see. Hard game going to East Carolina. East Carolina has played well. A little bit of a trap game after the emotional drubbing of SMU over the weekend. And then the conference championship game versus the Houston Cougars. Cincinnati wins out. They should be at the playoffs. Period. End of story. Don't even talk to me about anybody else. By the way, it is the first time ever that a group of five teams has cracked the top four in the college football playoff stadium. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I am a Cincinnati grad, and so I am prejudiced <laughs> when it comes to football. Basketball, however, you know, doesn't really matter to me that much, but football it does. Brandison with the bucket. He had a quiet game last night against Cincinnati. Did not make a field goal first time in like 15 games that had happened. He went 0 for 3 from the field. That's Smith. Hard. Yep. yep. Kid Kissinger weighs off the basket. A charge on Mark Smith. Kofi Coburn. In perfect position, steps up, gets set, takes the charge, acts like he's been shot. He hasn't been. Did you oh, look at him. Look, throw his arms up. That's classic, isn't it? Did you feel the ground shake over here? I did a little bit. I did a little bit. I love the big fellow from Kingston, Jamaica. Had a really good visit with him yesterday and enjoyed every single second of it. What a 
What a great personality. Just brings a smile to your face. Boy, he and Bradford are all tanked yep. up. And the officials have been instructed to point of emphasis this year. The first displacement called a foul. I don't know if it was the first, but they did eventually call Bradford on that, his second foul. Now these are two big dudes right here as Kofi Coburn goes 285 and Davion Bradford goes 270. Bradford got an elbow in the chops at one point. He's thinking, man, how do I stop that? That's 555 pounds right Combined, now. yeah. Yeah. Half so, a Hartford. That's what that is. Over a quarter of a ton. Yeah. Yeah. You deal with bovine. I deal with the metric system, which is good. <laughs> Just wonder if you're still paying attention, you know? Bradford to the bench with his two fouls. Kofi now with 14 points here in the first half. He had 18 in his season debut last night against Cincinnati. Missed the second free throw, but that's kept alive briefly by Williams, but he stayed intercepts. Wells had a big half off the bench, trying to get around a couple of players. And then it bounced off the knee of whom? The girl. Now, the officials look. A baseline official was looking for help. That's Lee Cassell. He looked to Kelly Self and then yeah, you know, said K State ball. But girl never never sold that it was that it was white basketball. He never sold it, which tells me it went off of him. But we'll see. And he misses the jumper Doesn't matter. 16 feet. Doesn't matter. So under a minute to go in this first half. Illinois with the ball. Six point lead. Turbello going to take one off the glass. Noel will push as he so often does. Kicks. Mark Smith gets around Williams. Stopped by Coburn. Three McGurl. Good. Big time stop. That's the leadership that Bruce Weber is looking from. McGurl to make big shots at big times. Now we're going to have to use it or lose it. Timeout. There's basically no difference shot clock to game clock, so the line I can't hold it for the final shot here. Yeah, Mike but Illinois has done well sharing the ball. Ten assists on their 12 made field goals. Yeah, Andre Corbello has been a, a magician with the basketball. Well, let's see what the Illini draw up for what they hope will be the final shot of this first half from Kansas City. So McGurl wanted to show his leadership. They've got him matched up with Corbello. This is going to be fun to watch. Bello will begin his dribble with eight seconds left. High screen set by Coburn. Down to three seconds. Got this match inside. Coburn. I don't think he got it off in time. Would, would not have counted, I don't think, anyway, had it gone. A little slip there kind of threw off the timing of that play. Yeah, Coburn ended up matched up with McGurl inside. They didn't recognize the mismatch. Especially when Davian Bradford was in the game. That was another big body that matched up well with Kofi Coburn. And then, of course, Marquise Noel just provided such an offensive lift for this team with 11 points in 12 minutes in the first half. Bounce pass is intercepted by Mark Smith. He's running with Masood, kicks it left side. Miguel, who had foul issues in the first half, two quick fouls. Puts up a quick shot, and that is off the mark. Miguel, by the way, only able to play three minutes in that first half because of the foul issues. Easy Agu, similar two fouls. He played less than two minutes. That is an offensive foul on Hawkins. No basket for Coburn. Uh, Easy Agu just came up from the baseline and took the charge right there. And that's the third foul on Coleman Hawkins. And it could have been the third foul on Easy Agu, but he really established position early. So Hawkins becomes the first player on either team to reach three fouls, and it comes inside first 30 seconds, 35 seconds of the second half. <laughs> Illinois will sub, but not for Hawkins. They'll bring in Hutcherson for Curbelo. Talking with his head coach there. Hmm. Interesting exchange there. Yeah, that is. Down low, that's a slam for Easy Agar. Corbello's walking down towards the end of the bench. 
standing up. Keep an eye on this. And now it looks like he's coming back to sit on the bench with his teammates. And he's sitting down. Williams gets in the lane. Frazier stripped by Miguel and then commits a foul. Boy, Frazier has just struggled. That's two on Frazier. We mentioned that he didn't have any points last night. He didn't have any points in the first half tonight either. When Andre oh. Curbelo, they are checking him out. We've seen this offense bogged down without him in the lineup. And that was part of the problem last night when he sat. Illinois became a stand-around type offense. Obviously, Curbelo started the half on the floor, so he was physically able to go. I'm trying to think if there's anything that happened in that quick sequence that may have jarred him. Man. Go back and take a look. It's, from what we're seeing from the truck, there doesn't seem to be anything in particular that we can point to. But we'll keep an eye on it. Bucket for Pack. He's got six. And K-State has gone back in front. Not there that time for the big man. Illini, prior to that shot, had turned it over three times, all three of their second-half possessions. Put back for Easy Agu, and what a start to the second half for Kansas State. And Illinois is going to call a quick timeout. You know, while Mark Smith doesn't get the bucket, but he's aggressive. And he's got something to prove tonight against his former team. That's really good, by the way. Anything over one is considered exceptional. Let's look at ball screens now. Ball screens right now. Look at Illinois. One point per, per possession for one ball screen. Two ball screens, 1.2. Why? Because Andre Corbello has been really good off the screens, and he's found open teammates. So it's a really interesting way to be intentional as a coach as we look at the back cut right there. No ball screen needed on that play. And a little touch in the paint that drives up that points per possession in the paint. But really interesting to make real-time coaching decisions based upon the shot tracker information. I love it. I actually wrote a book called The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick-Butt Culture, which deals with using technology to improve communication and accountability and build a culture of we by using that technology. By the way, it's available on Amazon.com. It's a nice little stocking stuff for Mark if you'd like to get one for Trevor. All right, you got that? Nice plug. <laughs> 9-0 run for K-State came to an end with that last bucket for the Illini out of the timeout. So three minutes into this second half, one point lead for K-State. Frazier. Coburn oh. after the block by Easy Agu with the emphatic slam that Kofi has 16. That ball came off the backboard about a bazillion miles per hour and Kofi Coburn right there. He's got really good hands. Masood, tough shot off the heel. Frazier finds Colburn. And Easy Agu just picked up his third foul. Watch Co Coburn's hands right here. I mean, that thing is jetted right at him, and somehow he catches the ball. I mean, that would hit me in the face. Would have been an improvement, too. But Coburn with really good hands. That's why he'll be able to play at the next level. He just has tremendous hands. And then Illinois in the up-tempo situation without Curbelo. Frazier gives it up. Well, if you don't run with the big fella, he's going to make you pay. And Andre Curbelo, speaking of him, he's on the bench. He's got ice on the back of his neck right now. And they are checking him out. Coburn looking better from the line as we take a look at Corbello live on the bench. So we'll see if we see him on the floor again. But in that towel wrapped up some ice. And as Mark alluded to, for the neck of Corbello. Masood. What a nice cut. The backside defender completely broke down. Lost vision. Masood was wide open. Seven points for Masood after a quiet game last night. He did not score against Arkansas. The Bosman's for donkey in the game for Illinois. Kofi getting a breather. Williams on the drive. Kicks. 
Hutcherson. Shot clocks at two. That one goes up. Out there for Williams. Offensive rebound. Bosman's for Doc. Three, Hutcherson. Well, Hutcherson shot like that. He was wishing it in. No confidence on that shot. We come to a break. Well, the Illini led it by three at the intermission. They lead it by two our first time out of the second half. Really effective. Jaron Holmes, his running mate in the backcourt. Dominic Welch, also a 6'5 big guard that can see over defenders. Jalen Attaway, another 6'5 athletic small forward. This is a St. Bonaventure team that is going to be dangerous come NCAA tournament time. It could be another one of those Loyola types of stories to the Final Four. Wow. That is quite the hype. Pack fouled. That's three fouls on Frazier. What could hurt the bodies from a seeding perspective is that the A-10 this year, quite frankly, is down. VCU is not as good as VCU has been. Dayton is not as good as Dayton has been. And right now, St. Bonaventure is carrying the banner for the Atlantic 10. Something the Illini have to be concerned about. Frazier, three fouls. We got Corbello on the bench. What appears to be a next situation we may or may not see back on the floor in this game. Hutcherson. Masood deflected that off Williams, and it's Kansas State possession coming up as McGurl and Noel will come back in for Bruce Weber's team. Bruce Weber playing the school he was the head coach of for nine seasons, 2003 to 2012. Of course, Brad Underwood of Illinois who played as an assistant coach at K-State. You know, Mark, you brought up the guard situation, and Trent Frazier right now has to come up big in this game. With the injuries, the foul trouble, everything else that's going on on the bench at, at Illinois right now, now is the time when Frazier's got to be the best defender on the floor. He's got to be the best soldier for this team. There he is, matched up with McGurl. Masood, that's a deep three right in the face of Grandison, and he knocks it down. Ten points for Ish Masood. Yeah, it's 6'9". You better have a hand not in his face, but above his face. He sees over defenders. That's his value to this ball club. Remember K-State a year ago, they could throw in the Ocean State and need deep for 3.1. This year, a little different. Away from the ball. We're getting a foul there on Bradford. Take a look at what's going on with the Rome and Legends Classic. The earlier finals, including wins for Virginia and Providence, and those teams going on right now at ESPN 2. 30 15 Virginia in that game. At the half, I am told. Boy, Providence in the Big East. I think the Big East is the best conference in the country. Three fouls on Bradford. That was a tough shot for Frazier. Still looking for his first points here in Kansas City. Masuda missed. Put back the girl. No third opportunity. As it's boarded by Grandison. Frazier, quick pass. Williams spots up a three. Oh! Grandison crashing the boards. Loose ball. Noel grabs it and they get a timeout. Kansas State. So in a game like this, loose balls become critical. And it's the guy that's first to the floor that gets the loose balls. Now watch as this ball goes to the floor. You've got Coburn, who's right there. Ball goes to the floor. Who gets on the floor first? It's Noel. Well, everybody else stands around and watches right there. you got two orange churches. They've got to get on the floor for that, especially on shots and block shots. It's going to be a really fun matchup. Turnover is an issue in this game. K-State's only turned it over twice. Illinois has turned it over a dozen times. And K-State's actually turned those 12 turnovers into 14 points. Really, it's kept K-State around and then giving them the lead. Helped Let's see what K-State does with this possession. Noel, who got the loose ball and then gets the shot and misses it. So that possession didn't hurt Illinois in this particular case. It was almost an illegal screen by Coburn. He, he definitely reached out with his left knee a little bit there. Up, 
Plover comes up to screen. Fraser uses it, kicks to Plummer. The lefty's three is knocked down. Back in front for the fighting Illini, and that's a dozen for Plummer. Yeah, if Illinois wins, it's because Plummer's knocking down shots. He made big shots in the first half. That was a huge shot right there. He is four for five from beyond the arc tonight for a team, Illinois, that was three for 22 in three-point shooting last night in the loss. Got to look for Plummer again. Watch number 11. If Frazier's smart, he'll see him, and he's open. Foul on the floor prior to the shot on McGurl. Alfonso Plummer, look at the shot preparation. His feet are set. His hands give a good target. He waves goodbye. Quick shot. Look at his feet. He's already got his hands ready to show right there. I mean, that's right. That's a great pass by Frazier right in the shooting pocket, exactly where Plummer likes it. That's the value of a point guard who understands exactly where Plummer wants the basketball. Really good pass. Simple pass, but a great pass by Frazier. And Andre Corbello is at the game. He's back on the floor. He feeds, and a three is knocked down by Jacob Grandison. Quick assist there for Corbello. Five points for Grandison. Biggest possession of the game right now. Get the hands from Miguel to McGurl. And Corbello commits a foul. Unintentional kind of got the feet tangled up. First on Andre. Girl drives hard. Yeah, that, that, that's an obvious foul on Corbello. I mean, he just rides right into it. Might as well saddle up. It's a good call by the official. Still a big possession here for K-State. Down five. Led by as many as three here in the second half. Noel trying to get around the big man, but... Trophy having none of it there. In transition, Brandison reverses and scores. Started with Coburn and his defensive feet against Noel. He didn't let it get by him that time. An 8 0 run for the Illini, and they're up seven. Noel trying to snap that skid, but can as it rims out. Curbelo. Trying to put on the Jets, and the girls stand with him. He turns the corner. Around and around he goes, throws it up. Coburn blocked by Miguel, but Miguel just picked up the foul, and he has his third personal. Andre Curbelo finds an open teammate. Jacob Grandison takes it to the rim. Spent some time with an ice pack on the back of his neck before returning. Now he's going back to the Illini bench. Hober now 6 of 8 from the line tonight. And he is 10 of 12 from the free throw line to start the season. Now, Frazier and Plummer now will take over the ball handling duties. And, and Plummer's done a tremendous job. Number 11 in orange here tonight has just been on fire from the three-point line. It's a 9-0 run for the Illini, and this eight-point lead is their largest of the night. Back almost had it stolen by Grandison. Now needs somewhere to go with it quickly. Finds Mark Smith. Five on the shot clock. Down to two. Smith's going to have to put it up. And he ran out of time. A rare turnover for K-State. They're fourth of the game, and it comes on a shot clock violation. Well, and as a coach, that drives you crazy because you just had a timeout to set up the play. But credit the Illinois defense with taking away the first option, which is Nigel Pack off that initial ball screen. And they just smothered that thing. Trying to get it to Coburn. And possession error will give it to Kansas State. First to four. Works every time, doesn't it? 
He's Yegu. Was the first of the floor, and therefore it is K-State's ball. I mean, as soon as you see the ball, you just got to go get down and get after it. Leave some skin on the floor. Go get yourself a loose ball, and your coach will pat you on the back, and you're actually playing. Noel off the screen. I don't know if Plummer got a hand on that, but nonetheless, we have a foul as Easy Agu on the rebound. But pushed by Kofi Coburn, and that's Kofi's second. Been a bit of a scoring drought here for K-State. Over four minutes, they're trying to end that here and do so with a pack three. Yeah, that's huge. Nine points for the K-State point guard. I'd go right, try to draw the defender off the plumber. Using the Kofi screen. Gives it to Coburn. Trying to... Yep, there he is. Wide open plumber. Got it lead. again. His fifth three of the game in six tries. 15 points for Alfonso Plummer. And an assist from Kobe, Kofi Coburn. Well executed inside out basketball. Easy Agu, one dribble, trying to muscle with Coburn and won't get a second opportunity. That was a huge moment for Kofi Coburn to find an open teammate as the defenders collapse and make that play. He couldn't make that play last night against Cincinnati. Coburn on the doorstep of the double double, 20 points, nine rebounds. K State needs a basket. Smith trying to give him a little long with a very deep three. That looked good from where he let that pick go. It was online, just a hair long. Nine minutes to play in this third game, third place game of the 21st Annual Hall of Fame Classic. And Smith commits the foul, stopping the clock with under nine minutes to go. Look, this is a simple play, but it's a seminal moment for Kofi Coburn as he squares and he looks, he has vision, he sees and finds the open plumber who's been so hot. And that is a smart five-man play to a shooting guard who's been hot all night. Kofi Coburn was a guy that didn't have many assists at all a year ago. And he exploded emotionally when he saw his teammate knock down that three ball. Big moment for Kofi Coburn and his growth as a big man. Coburn, seven of eight from the field tonight. A guy, Coburn, who shot 65% from the field last year, fourth in the nation. 78 of those shots were dunks, which led the nation in dunks. Williams, the drive, the kiss, got his own miss. On the deck, able to flip it back, but Pack picks it off. They got a two on none. Hawkins streaking back, but Pack stuffs it home. Nigel Pack starting to come to life. The sophomore learning how to be a leader for this K-State team early in the season. He puts him in double figures with 11 and gets it back to a two-possession game. Hawkins with his three. Got it! Hawkins answers for the fighting Illini. You know, we've talked about Trent Frazier not making baskets. But he's making baskets for his teammates right now. He is contributing. Yeah, give him credit on, on that five assists now tonight. Pat wants it. 17 footer, good. He's starting to feel it there. He's looking around, thinking there was a foul on Plummer there. He cheats toward the ball. You don't want to cheat too far away from Plummer. 24 versus 11 in the corner. Razor a miss. He's now 0 for 14 combined from the field in the two games he's played here in Kansas City. Bradford, I think the ball touched him while he was partially out of bounds on the baseline. It'll be Illinois ball when we come back. 7.09 to play. It's Illinois leading by seven. 
Just that full court pressure. Right away. Out of the cross with a couple seconds to spare. Curbelo leaning in, scoop shot, got it to fall. And one for Andre Curbelo. Boy, nursing a sore neck and somehow snakes through the defense. Man, that is a tough, tough play. And his whole body language, he's not feeling great. He has six assists of his own tonight. He finishes off the three-point play. Ten-point lead for Illinois, their largest of the night. Pack trying to cut into that. Curbelo rebound. So Curbelo comes in for his injured teammate, gets a deuce, knocks down a free throw, and then gets a rebound. Tough kid. See that 17 assists on 21 made field goals. Hawkins a miss. Miguel run out. He got a few numbers for K-State. Pack lines up a three. K-State comes away with no points on that possession. Pack takes the three. Ish pursuit is in perfect position on the backside and steps out of bounds. He just held his position. He had a chance for a rebound and stick back. Wow. How locked in is Plummer? Contested from the corner, and he hits another 18 points. Alfonso Plummer feeling it tonight. Six of seven for beyond the arc. Well, Alfonso Plummer in the first half. Andre Curbelo figured out that he had 11 threes against Oregon State during the 2020 conference tournament in route to a career high 35 points. So he's familiar with this territory of banging a bunch of threes. Nearly a dozen is his career high. Bradford trying to go to work on Coburn. That's a tough chore. Got caught up in the body of travel. Oh. They're about to call a travel. Then Kip Kissinger overruled his partner. And that's a foul on Coburn. Yeah. The ruling was that Coburn stepped into the cylinder of the offensive player and therefore caused the first contact. Masood, catch and shoot three, well off the right side. Now Illinois is going to be smart with the basketball, maybe not. Steele, Masood being chased by Hutcherson and Williams. Pack hanging on the rim, making sure he didn't come down on somebody. Meanwhile, Illinois goes the other way. Pull it out. And with Curbelo out of the game, now we're seeing that Illinois a little bit discombobulated offensively. No true point guard on the floor right now. And with six on the shot clock, a K-State foul. So Coach, let's take a look at that play with Kofi earlier. Now watch 21 as he bellies up. That's legal. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, bump and grind. Now he moves in. See him moving in right there? That was the call right there. If he would have just built the fence around the basket, he would have been fine. But he chested up and moved in the cylinder of the offensive player. This is only game two for Coburn, but you can even see the progress yeah. from last night to tonight. And the consistency yes. from last night to tonight. Because he was so dominant early. He's been cons he was dominant last night early and then inconsistent. He's been consistent tonight. Four and a half minutes to go. K-State wants to do something they did last night, and that was a, a, a late rally against Arkansas that came up short. A three there from Masood helps out to get it down to 10. 
Yeah, K-State made it really interesting coming down the stretch last night. See if they can make it interesting here again. Plumber. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I, I have an idea. You may want to not lay off him. Seven of eight. Noel helped up quickly after a hard foul. A hard tumble, I should say. The foul is on Coburn. And that's his fourth. So Plummer is number 11. His career high trays in one game is 11. And right now he's rolling seven. Those are interesting numbers. Which reminds me of the game coming up in Vegas later tonight. That's exactly right. <laughs> what a great segue. We had that planned right now. Uh, Now they're going to take Kofi to the bench with his four fouls with just over four minutes to go. The smile on the face of the big man. Kofi's personality is infectious. You see him smile, you want to smile yourself. That's exactly right. Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh, Why not? Just a hair short, but it was on line. Yeah, yep. he's on the line. That's a two. Yep. He's on the line. Good call. Barely toes on the line for Kasuki. Two point shot. Back to ten. Hutcherson fakes. Now gives it up. Guess who? Well, it was Williams this time. <laughs> Good looking stroke, though. Yes. Tough veteran player. Does a little bit of everything for this ball club. And one for Marquise Noel. Timeout, 314 to go. The fighting line I had a little fun tonight. At the expense of the K-State defense as Alfonso Plummer knocks down his seventh three. And Andre Corbello, what do you think? I hear you. I feel you. Great to see Tom Penders turn around Tom. Rhode Island, Texas, Houston. Everywhere he went, he figured out a way to get it done. Great coach, underrated. And now is in the Hall of Fame, deservedly so. Coming out of the timeout, well, completes the three-point play. Coburn's come back on the floor. Pressure put on, easily broken by the Illini. Yeah, you throw it to Coburn at half court. Oh. Noel steals it from Plummer. No shot, foul on the floor with three minutes to go. It was really fun to see Tom Penders. There you see some of the places he was at GW, Houston, Rhode Island, Texas. Won three regular season and four conference tournaments. Was the 1987 A-10 Coach of the Year. Everywhere he went, he had a plan. And you know, he talked the other night about communicating with players and how he would speak with players. He would reason with players. He would be a father figure for players. And he just doesn't understand all the yelling and screaming. And that's why he was successful, because, you know, Tom Penners would be a better coach today than he was then, and he's the Hall of Fame coach there. Because players need to understand the why now, and that's important. And I think every coach in the country can learn from how Tom Penders went about his business to be respectful and teach the why to these young people who deserve that why. Why do you do this? This is why it's important, and here's how you can help us. Well, K-State with three minutes to go down eight. So they have a little more of a comeback in them still left tonight. In this third place game from Kansas City, the Hall of Fame Classic. Well, Curbelo's job now is to run clock and get this thing down to where they don't have to worry about any more injuries. Coburn rolls to the basket. That's deflected off. K State. Well, the worst scenario in this possession is that there's only four seconds on the shot clock. So Cabello has done his job of burning some clock here. Now you need a quick out of bounds play shot. 
Coburn, the talent of shoot. He got it off in time. Kofi does have his 29th career double double tonight, despite that miss 20 points, 11 rebounds. I've never heard so many people in orange yell shoot. Yes. I think the crowd behind. Yeah, the crowd, that's what it was. The bench for Illinois was yelling shoot. Illinois trying to stamp a two-game skid. They beat Jackson State and Arkansas State by 24 and 39 points, respectively, before losing at Marquette in a one-point game. Then the 20-point loss last night to Cincinnati. It's Corbello back to the bench. That is a three-point shot and a foul on Hutcherson. Well, they lost that game without Coburn. Now, Hutcherson says that Pack kicked his leg out. I didn't see that. And it was not a good angle on the closeout by Hutcherson either. It is a two-point field goal attempt, not a three. So two shots here for Pack. Now, I like what I've seen from Pack taking more of the scoring load, taking more of the responsibility. He looks like a guy that wants more responsibility. That's what I like about what I've seen in his development over the last several games. He knocks down both, so this is a two-possession game now. It's 68-62, 2.14 still to go. And Corbello's on the bench. Trying to trap Hutcherson. K-State on a 7-0 run, but they commit a foul as they whack Granderson across the face. Second on Noel. Put Granderson at the line, who's been an outstanding free throw shooter in his career. Mark, it's really interesting what Brad Underwood is doing right now. He's going with size against the press. And the reason for that is that they're anticipating double teams and traps. And he's got big players out there that can see over the traps and see open people. And remember, K-State's guards are short. So those big guys have, have an advantage just seeing over the defense. He hits the front end of the one and one after the eighth K-State team foul. And this is some pretty masterful coaching of juggling when you've got a backcourt, the injury of Frazier, the sore neck that we've seen with Curbelo, who can only be out there for short stints, it appears. And Brad Underwood going to a really unique way of breaking the press. Really good coaching. Illinois does play Friday at home against UT Rio Grande Valley. We got that Big Ten ACC matchup on ESPN2 on Monday the 29th of this month against Notre Dame. Tough shot. Batted by Eziegu. Coming this way is Kasupki, but can't preserve the possession for the Wildcats. And the shortest player on the floor for, for, floor for the Illini is Demonte Williams at 6'3". Everybody else is basically 6'6 six, six or better. Under two minutes to go. Illinois has the ball in a seven-point lead. All Hutcherson has to do is just keep it simple. Doesn't have to make any home run plays, just simple plays. Slips a little bit, picked up the dribble. Kofi had to go out to get it. Three to shoot. He shoots a jumper from about 15, 16 feet and knocks it down. Improvement from the big guy. We're seeing it here tonight. Pack three. Front rim miss. And now Illinois is starting to feel better now with just over a minute to go. Up nine. If they're going to get out of Kansas City with a win and the third place game. You think about what the Illini have done tonight. Basically, Frazier goes out with seven minutes to go and a seven point lead. The Illini have pushed that to a nine point lead without Frazier and basically without Corbello as well. A little glimmer as an offensive foul on Williams will give it to K State. Just 49 seconds to go. 
Plummer, what a night for him. From beyond the arc, 21 points, 7 of 9, three-point shooting. Tested Noel, timeout 19 off the bench for Noel. Kansas State uses their final timeout. They're back in action on. And this thing ain't over yet. Set point deficit with 44 to go. Full court pressure here now. Without Curbelo in the game, without Frazier available. I mean, Hutcherson sees right over Noel. Yeah, you got 6'6", six, six, looking over 5'8". I mean, that's a real value add for Illinois to, to call the call into this experience so that Hutcherson gets an opportunity to step up and prove that, that he can fill in in that position and make plays, make smart plays, make simple plays. And the thing I like about Hutcherson is he hasn't tried to do anything that's spectacular. He's just made the simple plays. And that's a value add in this circumstance when you're closing out a game. And he's getting a chance to play. This is a guy who played at Wesleyan University in Connecticut for a couple of years, freshman and sophomore year. Sat out as a transfer year at Illinois. Then he missed last season due to a back injury. He missed the first handful of games this year because of a tailbone injury yeah. making his debut last night. Well... Well, he's showing that versatility, which which comes in so handy, especially because you don't know who's going down next. You don't know with COVID and everything else. I mean, you've got to have depth. And Hutcherson tonight is proving that he belongs and can provide. Shoots it well. K-State, they don't get a quick steal. You're going to have to do something in a hurry and put somebody at the line. Coburn, they grab him. You know, Kofi... Last year shot 55% from the line. I know it's only not even been two full games for him, but he has looked much better from the line, and the results have been there these two games. Well, he's improved a lot. We saw the mid-range jump shot that went down. I mean, nobody better to play bully ball than Kofi Coburn in the paint, but now if he can add that 12 to 15-foot shot, now knock down free throws on a regular basis with pressure on him now. This is a different type of free throw. Up seven, 30 seconds to go. A little different, wasn't it? It is. Short with it. A little different. Six of ten tonight. A little flatter. Kind of pushed that one. Let's see if he adjusts here. When he shoots it high, it's pretty good. When he shoots it flat, not good at all. Tends to roll off of his palm. That went a little long off yep. the back rim. So yep. K-State's going to push it. What a quick shot from a girl. A Coburn rebound. And they follow him and we'll go back. And Kofi's going to get another try at two more free throws. Well, you got to have a short memory now. You got to be like a Kansas City Chief defensive back. Can't worry about the last pass. Illinois in this half. Four at ten from the line. They've missed their last four. Those last two for Kofi. Hutcherson slapping some five, doing a little brain surgery on the big guy. Clear his head. <laughs> he likes that little extra. A little extra high five right there. Put a little extra heat on that high five, didn't he? And my arm would be broken. <laughs> Did hit one at two, yeah. so it is a three possession game. Long three, Noel. Coburn tried to give it to Hutcherson, but instead it was packed, and now Hutcherson comes away with it after the miss. Bruce Weber says no fouls. And in this matchup, the two coaches with great ties to the other team. It is 14th ranked Illinois that wins it over Kansas State 71-64. Well, this was a game about metrics tonight. Illinois needed to